a lot of what we do in this piece of therapy is the same sort of thing that a professional organizer would do. Um, we focus on categorization. We focus on organization of things. For many people with hoarding problems, the volume of their possessions would not seem so big if they were organized and not all out in the middle of the room. Um, and, and one of the problems, that, and it sort of came out earlier on, it has to do with this notion of wanting to keep things in sight because that's a way the world is organized. I didn't show you Irene's bedroom, but in her bedroom it looked like the rest of the house, but the clothes were on top of the dresser all the way to the ceiling. But her dresser drawers were empty. And what she said was, if I put my clothes in the drawer, I won't be able to see them. If I can't see them, I don't know, I won't, don't know if, if I, I forget I have them. The other thing we do is to treat acquisition uh, and, and difficulty discarding uh, and clutter. Now we start with acquisition, and one of the things we do, very simple, we ask them when they're sitting in the clinic, we say, okay, what would you, what do you think you should ask yourself before you buy something or before you pick up something for free? And typically the response we get is the same thing that all of us would say. Well, I'd want to ask myself if I really need it. Uh, do I have enough money for it? Do I have space for it? Do I already have something else that would qualify? It would be the same thing. We have them type those up on a piece of paper and, and even laminate it if possible. And then we have it carry, them carry it with them wherever they go. We say, look, you want to buy something? You want to pick up something? Just pull out your questions and answer them. And if you can answer them, then it's fine to collect this. It's fine to acquire it. Now, I know this work because I was sitting behind a one-way mirror watching one of our groups once. And during the break, we take a break in the middle and people chat and get some refreshments. And two people stayed in the room and they were chatting. And one of them said, I went shopping last weekend, but I didn't bring my questions because I knew if I did, I wouldn't buy anything. <laughs> so I know it works. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we do is simply to treat the problem in a, a way that is similar to how we would go about teaching physical fitness. And the, the, the analysis is this. What happens with people with acquiring problems is they have an overwhelming urge to acquire something. And they have no tolerance in, in, for that urge. So what we try to do is to teach them to tolerate the urge, to experience the urge without giving into it. And we start with something we call drive-by non-shopping. So we have them pick out a store where it's hard for them to resist and we have them drive by. If it's a real hard store, we have them drive by real fast. Uh, and then slow down and then eventually walk by and then eventually go into the store, pick up something they want to buy, look at it, consider it, put it down and walk away. And in doing so, what we do is we teach them to tolerate that urge to acquire, to keep the focus on the context of their life to tolerate that urge to acquire, and in that way they develop control over their acquiring behaviors. Now, the, the, the problem we see frequently when people come in for hoarding treatment is that they'll say, well, I used to have an acquiring problem, but I'm, I'm over that now. And But what they mean by that is they're avoiding parts of town where they can't control their acquiring. And they've gained control of the behavior by avoiding places in their life. That's an ineffective strategy. Because in our culture, it's impossible to avoid acquiring cues for very long. The, the, the way we deal with difficulty discarding is a little more complicated. And uh, what we do here, we can't, we can't tell people what to think and what to believe about their possessions. All we can do is to get them to treat their beliefs about objects, their beliefs about possessions, as somehow conditional as somehow like hypotheses. What we try to do basically is to turn our clients into scientists and to look at their, their behavior and their beliefs from a scientific perspective. So as an example of, of one of these strategies, um, a woman uh, we were treating had a really serious hoarding problem. Her, her place was absolutely full and we had her coming into the clinic. We have her bring in a trash bag um, with stuff in it, and then we have her pull stuff out of the bag, and we work on it. Well, one day she pulled out the top of a board game, and it was, the rest of the game was gone, and it was kind of ratty and, and so forth, but 
she had difficulty throwing it away. And, I, and so what I said was, can you tell me what it would be like for you to throw it away? And we normally, when we do this, we, we teach people to rate it on a scale of zero to 100, 100 being the worst feeling you could imagine. And so what she said was, if I threw that away, it would feel like death. And I figured death must be 100, but I don't know. And, and I don't know how she knew either, but it, uh, it was pretty bad. And then I said, well, okay, if you feel that way, how long would that feeling last? And she said, well, if I threw it away, I think that feeling would last forever. And she really believed it. It's one of the characteristics we see of these folks is this funny kind of belief that if they don't acquire something, they're going to regret it forever. And so um, I said, OK, well, let's go with this experiment. And she agreed. And so she put it in the trash. And a minute later, I said, how do you feel now? And she said, well, I would rate it at 100, but it doesn't feel like death. So death must have been more than 100. Uh, but the, the first prediction didn't come true, and that's important. And then I called her 24 hours later. I said, how do you feel now? And she said, well, I would rate it at about a 10. So her second prediction didn't come true. So now what happened? OK, we go through the conclusions with her. The conclusion of your experiment is that when you throw something away, it doesn't feel as bad as you think, and the bad feeling doesn't last as long as you think. And now we develop with her new hypotheses. Now, we, we do this to change the way they, people relate to their possessions. We don't do this to declutter the home because the, declutter, the clutter is the product of this behavior. We can bring somebody in to clean out the home, but that's not going to do much good because it's going to fill up again until this behavior changes. Now, I know I'm out of time, but I want to just say a couple other things. That's a, an outline of what we do in treatment. The other thing we've been experimenting with is taking these principles and putting them into something we call the Buried in Treasures workshops. These are workshops that are facilitated by people with hoarding problems for people with hoarding problems. If you, any of you are interested in exploring this, there's a great deal more information on the International OCD Foundation website. And uh, if any of you are interested in going to the conference, there's a conference this year in Atlanta in July, the IOCDF. And there, there would be workshops on uh, how to facilitate these groups. We have a facilitator's manual so that anyone can, can pick up this manual, form one of these groups, and treat them. And we've been doing some research on this, and we get some pretty good outcomes with these folks. So if you're interested at all in this kind of approach, it's, it's an approach we developed because of the limited amount of resources available for these folks.